Okay, let's draw the Lewis structure for the reaction between ammonia, NH3, and boron trifluoride. Let's do ammonia first. Nitrogen has five valence electrons, and hydrogen has one valence electron, and there's three of them, so that's going to give us a total of eight valence electrons to work with. Hydrogens are never the central atom, so we're going to put nitrogen here in the center, put the three hydrogens around it. We need to connect them with bonding pairs. That's going to eat up two, four, six of our electrons, so we have two left. Those two that are left are going to go on the, the central nitrogen there as lone pairs. So now we've used all our electrons for ammonia. Okay, let's move over to boron trifluoride. Boron has three valence electrons. That's in the third group, or group 3A. And fluorine is a halogen, so it has seven valence electrons. There's three of them. So that's 21, plus the three is going to give us 24. All right, we're going to put boron in the center because it's less electronegative than the fluorine. I'll put the fluorines around it. We need to get a bonding pair between each of the fluorines and the central boron. So that's two, four, six. We're down to 18 electrons. Let's get the octets around the fluorines on the, so get the terminal atoms to achieve an octet. That means we're gonna need six on each of these fluorines. That's all 18 are gonna be used there. Boron is an exception. Boron trifluoride is an exception to the octet rule. Now when these two react, there's no more valence electrons that boron has, so nitrogen can use both of its lone pairs to form a covalent bond with the boron in boron trifluoride. That's called a coordinate covalent bond. So let me redraw this. Sometimes you'll see an arrow there to indicate that that covalent bond is formed using the two electrons originally from nitrogen. All right, there's your uh, low structure for the reaction between ammonia and boron trifluoride.